Uh, it is. He's been playing it a lot in pubs. Okay. Um, been, I guess, you know, picking up, learning the hero bit. He's got a six set, so, you know, he's got the, the Dark Wizard set. And uh, hopefully that will be the best uh, Invoker set available on the market in the next three months. Is that not on the market? I was making an, uh, an Immortal jo or a uh, Arcana joke, but... Oh, okay. And by three months, I mean nine months, but... Uh, was that one of the ones from the, the recent? It's at the last head-to-head, -head, wasn't it? Isn't it? Oh no, isn't it Rubik? Did Invoker lose? Oh, that's right, Invoker lost. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I. Oh, I'm, that's I'm right. I'm confused. What you're My talking bad. about? My bad. I was, I was way off. It's no, end uh, of the day, last game of the day. Uh, it's Void Rubik. That's the remainder. Yes. Uh, the Invoker upset happened, and it's, uh, it's gone now. Yeah, I'm just and gonna now use our platform to quickly let viewers know you should be voting for Faceless Void. Exactly. I like. Won't, won't, won't accept any Rubik votes. I want those Rubik players to be angry for a second year in a row. That sounds fun to me. Yes. If you're, yeah, if you're on the fence, just think about annoying other people. That's why we all exactly. play Dota. You're not really playing. No one gets enjoys Dota from themselves they enjoy pissing off other people so what do you think about the invoker this game do you think he's going to go cross wex is question one uh, but i also feel like sunstrike would be really good against huskar too yes so. exor i believe it is i think you need it for the last hitting for the lightning stage cold snap with earth spirit rotations i think earth spirit may prioritize the mid lane more than the side lanes even yeah I, that's a good point that's like forge spirit plus cold snap and an earth spirit roam yep. huskar dies for sure his that's armor is way too low why earth spirit used to be like the best four position and the one of the most played was just because you just keep on ganking and crushing the mid lane you're a mid lane supporter you so never really played too much around side lanes so with that says how uh with that said how does how did the other lanes work out uh wh what's the um, blood seeker matchup they want what's the dragonite matchup they want i guess it's three three dragonite so it looks like it'll be off lane but you may just yeah prior you got to choose one of them to kind of prior prioritize ppd supporting and then the other you just accept they're going to have a kind of bad lane bad game um what is it the wraith you probably maybe just send one here against wraith king because that's lower kill potential than the mirana Plus one lane, but even Wraith King Willow can kill whoever or whatever it is. Wraith King Lion, both support plus cores have high kill potential. Did Sun Strike the Courier? No. So we'll be exhorted yeah. for sure for for CCNC here. We'll see how he works out on on this player. But they've got so many stuns. There's going to be plenty of Sun Strike potential this game, and um, even playing around with that stuff in Blood uh, with uh, Bloodseeker is fun. They've got Rupture, they've got Swap, they've got Earth Spirit, uh, Boulder Smash if they want to deal some damage in that way. There's lots of fun ways to um, to make more use of their heroes this game. All right, well, here we go. We get to see a C, C, and C invoker. Where is he going to throw that next Sunstrike? He's still singing Founding. Got to imagine it's coming. Wish I could play your perspective right now. It'd be great. Yeah. Um, and they're actually going to change up the lanes. Huskar is going to be safe lane. Uh, they'll put Armel in the mid lane instead. That way he doesn't have to deal with the invoker oh. and the earth spirit roam. It, it does sound a little bit too severe. It would be hard to play around that. He's holding on to the sun strike because he hopes his team finds that initial first blood for him. So they smoked up top. He actually popped, but not quite in the position they were hoping for. Cuckoo nearby. They Wolves. do spot Zai yeah. running past, but this Scout may be the bait now. here. Yeah, they're going to go running after him. Cuckoo. Could be in some trouble. PPD going to set up the stun into a roll here and the silence. The Sunstrike's there. He does not get the last hit, but it still goes the way of Optic Gaming. It goes to PyCat. Not quite the outcome you want, but still a favorable outcome for Optic. Yeah. I like how they did that. It's like they, they waited for a very long time. They knew their opponents were playing safe. They they walked Earth Spirit past just to make it seem like he was putting wards down or something like that, but only him. And then they just waited back with Peter hiding behind the tree. That way they could lay the trap and still get the kill. The, the benefit of all the nukes that they have, really. Yeah. It's like 100 damage from each person involved in that fight. Very nicely done. See, Tim's headed towards mid. Knowing there was a courier and some bounty runes going up to his way, he wants to snipe this courier, and it looks like he may as well do it. Courier snipes have become quite infrequent, which means this is more likely to work. He won't get it on the way out, but he will get it on the way back, I can only imagine, unless he we'll micros see. it an odd direction for whatever reason. But he is not sending it anywhere bizarre. Goodbye, little courier. Radiant Rest in peace. Has been TPs killed. immediately to the bottom lane, where it is going to be the DK in the solo lane. It's not Earth Spirit initially mid. They're tri laning up top, trying to get an initial kill, and they will get a well, second initial kill, which they'll get. I kind of like this, because you can secure a side lane, and then you're no longer needed there. You can go mid. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you start bottom, it's like kind of you're already sapping XP. So once you leave, your DK is in a really bad shape because you've shared XP and you're leaving him alone. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is like maybe one lane that I'm not too worried about uh, ditching for for the first <laughs> minute or so, because Dragonite's yeah. not going to really abuse the Wraith King. Wraith King's not really going to abuse Dragonite, but I mean, like you said, Dark Will is not going to be able to do that much past Sapien experience here and right clicking a bit. So, um, I definitely looks good for Optic. 
They also sent Morana mid, I see worth noting. We were kind of mentioning a potential uh, Husker mid. Yep. No longer the case with the Invoker pickup and also the Earth Spirit in the playing field. That would just be a pretty tough lane for Husker to play. So he is going to be playing up top, but that's against the tri lane. They do find Earth Spirit in the trees up Dyer's here. Middle tower is Doesn't under look attack. like much is going to come of it, as, although Raven is swinging on over. Either way, Earth Spirit trades pretty well right now. He's got 2.7 armor. He's like a, a rare strength hero that still has pretty respectable survivability early on. And against a hero like a lion, this is only going to get worse here. Get some blocks in. One Orb of Venom hit needs one or two more to get the stun. Down bottom, 33 got very low. I'm not sure if we'll see a, a kill up here. Still chasing the lion is Earth Spirit. Cuckoo should be able to get back to the tower safety, but they almost brought down 33. He, he popped the salve and had it broken, but it did kind of save his life as Wraith King got a crit. They Stunned him and got caught him in the Bramble Maze. This is what you're going to do against a hero like a solo DK down here is just bully him. Even if you can't kill him, get him down nice and low so that he can't stay in the lane. It definitely helps to have all the spell damage at least. Um, he actually executes a pull here and instantly ditches the lane, which is probably the right yeah. thing to do. Um, I mean, uh, still one of the creeps gets denied and Tim's is going to get some of that pull experience, but at the very least by the time he is in base, he's going to be able to teleport back and get some experience. Yeah. The wave is going to be closer to his tower and in some th that neutral camp is not worth much gold or XP, so he doesn't need to stay there for the newts. I'd much rather be back for the creep lane XP, although he is missing that under the tower. He glyphs it. Yeah. That's one way to make sure you get normally you see these glyphs around the mid lane, but he's going to use it down bottom and now able to TP back, although Unfortunately for him, Tim's just done a side pull. It's easy trying to get a kill mid here. They've got the Earth Spirit as well. They've got the stun. It's going to buy a little time. Armel's in very deep. Pounces doesn't get all the way out of there. Has another pounce, but he needs to get to the high ground. And his fairy find not going to be used. His TP was in his backpack, so not sure he could have even escaped there if he wanted to. But can you turn in that little corner? I assume he could have left onto the high ground. Maybe it didn't feel like it was worth it for the heal aspect. Yeah. But I mean, you can turn in any corner. That what do you mean? If you're talking about like just face your hero a certain yeah. direction? I, I really thought he was going to leap to the yeah. high ground and get out that way, but yeah, maybe it's just easier it, to die and respawn like yeah. the typical. It's quite hard to do. You can use the directional movement, but a lot of players don't use that. Yeah, I turned that on once and I was very confused and never went back. Yeah. That's uh, that's one of those hockeys that I think is a f small niche of players maybe use. SF players probably use it. Yeah, absolutely. So Huskar pretty zoned at this point. Hasn't even bothered to grab uh, Burning Spears yet, knowing that it's more important to stay alive in this lane where he can just be triple stunned and chased down and sunstrike. So even though they did dodge the scary lane for the Huskar, it kind of feels like he's still being shut down. Although he does pick up a Helm of Iron Will kind of out of nowhere. I'm sure the Courier Snipe helping a lot with that one. Yep. Bit of extra gold. Also just, you know, having nothing in terms of items. No boots, no wands. Just going straight for this Helm for the regen item. Gets stunned at the top lane, followed up by a silence here. That's going to get him very low on high cat with all this extra movement speed. Two points in the third. Should be able to chase him down. One or two more right clicks, but he's getting chain stunned here with the hex into the impale. Raven gets back to the tower as PPD wanted to chase further. I think probably could have got the kill with PPD chasing as well, uh, with Pycat chasing as well. Yeah, maybe. Nuts. Might have cost him a, like tanking the tower shots. It's always a bit risky if yeah. someone TPs in. Especially with this early five armor. Like uh, Raven going straight yeah. for the helm of iron mill is such a great idea because. Sitting under a tower like that, he was getting about 30 HP per second with inner vitality. So, worked out nice. Uh, he does take a bounty rune as well, TPing out here. Ooh, the camera weird. Doesn't get the stun just in time. So, two, three bounties going to TNC's side, so they've got to feel good about this one. 3-3 uh, three, three even wasting his time walking around. He's kind of off laning the radiant side. Going to pull creeps, I guess. Wow, okay. Safe lane's pulling creeps, why not? It's no longer really the safe lane these days. I think some of those names are perhaps a bit outdated, at least in meaning. Nice first hit crit as Sam H is looking to chase down 33. Should succeed in doing so and get the kill as it does look like DK at least spent his money before he goes down there. Not that he had all too much of it, so to speak. I mean, he's running around a 283 movement speed. It's pretty hard for him to do this creep pulling thing when, you're, when your opponents have like a full treads up on top yeah. of you. So. He's, uh, he's being game. sacked, but I think his team's probably just saying something along the lines of, you know, Husker's having just as bad of a time as you. Uh, bottom river. They're going to see an impale into an arrow. Should be the death of Zai. Goes for a stun. No roll of, in time, though. Yep. Tim's very familiar playing against Earth Spirit or playing as Earth Spirit, so dodges the boulder smash that would hit three. And then a couple more right clicks is the easy kill. Oh. So they, they came down push bottom push. because they want to push. Yeah, they have a Skelly army going already, and he's got additional Skellies to summon. These are the ones, I believe, from that kill that he got. So 
With the siege creep here, they want to take down this tier one. Raven, the carry of sorts, keeping in at level three. But hey, go why not? That's what you got to do sometimes. Yep. They want this 33 kill, and they've got the magic damage from the Burning Spears, as well as the Dark Willow here. He's going to follow it up with a Shadow Realm hit. Should be close to a kill here. He's surely making them work for it. Yeah. And I think that's honestly okay. The amount of time that they spent to blow him up was... They, I mean, the creep wave's dead. They did keep the Siege Creep alive, though. And with some skeletons, they should be able to bring it down still. Looks like Radiant do have a Glyph. Not sure if they're going to use it here. TNC tanking tower shots now just to make sure they get this tower. And they will succeed. Raven even gave the last hit. Yeah, they give it to him so you can get back into this. Sunstrike not going to land. Leap away as Zai's level 1 stun does not last Dyer's particularly long. Something that CCNC may be over maybe expected. expecting, yeah, yeah, the double stun. But even with that, it's still only, what, 0.5 seconds per level. Used to stun a little bit longer. Um, yeah, level 1, I think, used to be a full second even. Yeah, and that's one of the nice things that TNC's done is they kind of cut their losses, basically. So when you do an aggressive try lane like this, if the enemies just leave the lane, then you just never find kills no matter what. Great arrow on Peter. Oh, yeah. Tims is going to fold up with a curse ground for some even more stun duration. Peter tries to deny himself to these nudes. Won't succeed in doing so as they make their way to the shrine. So now because they haven't been able to catch up as many kills randomly across the map, uh, Zai doesn't have as much to grab. The sun strike kill made it all kind of cascades here. Raven Raven's down bottom. Yeah, he needs to be careful though. There's a lot of heroes coming his way, including a blood seek with rupture. Well, I think we'll see the dragon eye coming. Yep. Without too much worry here, but... Uh, he should know this top lane might be the same place to farm, although Sam H is already up there, so... Yeah, he's gonna TP his way out of there. Go for the jungle, in fact. So, last hit wise, pretty even across the board. Uh, very even game, gold-wise. Yep. Tower's dead on both sides. We're pretty much mirror, mirror images here. Uh, I guess I would argue Dragonite playing from behind is not as bad as Huskar. It's maybe yeah. something you could say, but Huskar has more ability to kind of snowball out of control in a short period of time. It's also say. like the, the farm distribution in general, like o, uh, Optic, I'd say OG, they are an OG, but not the one most viewers would think. Um, they've got it on, you know, their main carry, PyCat, and their mid CCC Invoker, whereas TNC, that their top farmer is Sam H. This is, he's normally like the playmaking initiator who has less farm, so yep. they're just gonna be less comfortable when Raven's having a bad game, whereas 33 having a bad game, you know, that's, that's a three position, normal thing. Yep, and, and still here that can absolutely contribute in that way. Land stuns yep. at the right time, move around pushing, split push, that kind of stuff. But Sam H is going to TP out, uh, prepping for a smoke here at the shrine. And they group up. I don't think that one was spotted by the Radiant team. They've got decent wards, actually, to control any kind of aggressive movement. And they're predicting something. They put the scan down, but it's a little early, actually. Yeah, I wonder if that will mislead PyCat, who is trying to find this small camp here. What was a dire scan, excuse me. Oh, Sam H going to scan him out. He walks into the Bramble, unfortunately, and there's going to be a stun to follow it up with the Wraith right, right Blast. There's going to be a Arrow and a Curse Ground. Pycat doesn't get a chance to cast a single spell there. Bramble is so tough, man. You're, you're trying to hurry, but sometimes you just don't expect the cast range to catch you in. A little Bramble and everything's set up. So they will start the pressure mid, at least. All you need is a, a Brown Boots and a Belt of Strength, and Dragon Knight feels, feels valuable here. Get some tower damage in. Radiant's bottom tower. Under it's best not to stun his friends. Yeah, this is just some casual tower damage here. Sam H shows up with a Wraith by a Blast. Not sure there's the best follow up. This Impale just level 2. Lion, not really particularly high level. It's 10 minutes in, he's still only level 3. Desperately going to need some experience somewhere on the map as Optic look to continue pressuring this tier 1. Salve up on the DK. He's going to keep chipping it whenever he can with the corrosive attack from his green dragon. He gets stunned again. Armel blinks it with a Sile Storm, and that's going to be enough to bring down 33. Yeah, isn't able to get his wand off in time. Yeah. A little too much burst damage, a little too hard to force that one. Another death for 33, but still not that much gold. I mean, his net worth is literally 100 away from Earth Spirit's position. So it does force a lot of reactions. Um, a lot of spells were used there. And even still, the, the, the supports on the enemy team aren't even that highly leveled. So yep. it doesn't feel that bad to me. Husker's game has been a bit salvaged, though. He's back up to getting an armlet. His boot's on the way as well. So... It's no longer just the story of an underfarmed Husker and DK who is struggling and falling behind. It's now really just the DK who's suffering. I would say the biggest lacking from those levels. So level six on Husker at this stage is certainly low. So it should yep. be easy to kill him. His damage output is still going to be high, but his survivability won't be impregnable like normal. So if they can rotate the right heroes over, absolutely they can get a kill on this guy. Seeing a smoke from the optic supports as they look to perhaps team up with Pycat. He's the most farm radiant hero. 
Uh, and unlike the Invoker, who's also very farmed, he's the one who wants to fight more and be aggressive, make some plays happen. So playing around him is definitely the right call as we'll see what they can achieve up top. Even just taking a tier two tower here, it's 11 minutes in. That's a nice pickup for them if they can get it. Instead, it's going to be Dark Willow who runs into them with the Shadow Realm and immediately pops the smoke and gets out. So they're doing a good job trying to get the sounds off in time, but it doesn't catch him before the Shadow Realm. So. Would have been an easy kill otherwise. And they did spot the, uh, I believe, the Marana as well as the, uh, I think it was the Wraith King used to be down there. So they felt comfortable trying to make a play there. I use Moonlight Shadow. It looks like to initiate on mid, but they actually spotted the uh, Wraith King going invis up top, I believe. So. Yeah, in the sentry mid lane spotting him out. Oh, Wraith I caught. Oh, that's a sub strike. Oh, yeah. my. In base. C, C, and C. Where did he see him from? There's Must like. Must have predicted it. I mean, he saw him in the jungle earlier, maybe. They go wow. for a D ward now, but. That um, was like... He saw him with the Bloodseeker passive. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. And he's probably armlet toggling, gets low. Yeah. Has to predict. Maybe he forgot Rest about his history, yeah. I mean, he may have... Yeah, it's one of those things you may see the thirst on you, but then think, oh, I'm fine, and then, yeah, Sunstrike comes out. Well, nicely, that's that's a huge nicely one. Nicely done. Yeah. 449 gold going to CCNC for that one. That's that's half of a piece of his Aghanim okay. Scepter parts. So... The Optic continue to play around this top side of the map. Wraith King did finish his blink now and immediately smoking up with RML and looking to make some plays happen. It was also Lion who's hit level six finally. So 13 minutes in, I believe he used that experience tome. Ooh, perfect grab here if they can get him. Yeah, he's got four orbs. He wants to plant some of these nice and deep. There's an arrow follow up. Easy kill. Don't even have to use that long cooldown of Finger of Death. So even better. This, this is the what the line does. Um, Earth spike into an arrow, that's a guaranteed kill every single time. And it still has the the ability to do so many other things. If that's a shadow demon and he buys a BKB, then this doesn't work out as long. But Lion has absolutely shown his value so far. Yep. He's going to plant some of those four ops that he'd been stocking up. Cuckoo getting those fantasy points. Yes. Getting them nice and deep in some slightly unconventional places. We'll see if PPD can sniff him out or not. Well, tower falls. Is I going to try for a solo kill mid, or top that is? Didn't hit the roll, but doesn't seem to matter. He still hits the stun and the silence. The damage over time from the magnetize is going to be enough. Gets the kill back at mid. Vengeful Spirit King initiated on. They're going to take down the Wraith King, but he has got the reincarnation. Rupture, though, is going to be there when he respawns if they want to throw it out. Don't even know they do need it. And there's going to be a Chaos Meteor to bring down Sam H a second time, but comes at the cost of the Dragon Knight. Still seems like a decent hold for Optic. Yeah, a lot of choices there for 3-3 to make. What does he go for the Huskar stun? But I think stunning the, the Wraith King under tower is definitely the right move. Um, maybe he's blink aggressively to get in, not quite sure. But again, he's kind of just spending his hero's um, resources in the way that he's just trying to get as tanky as possible and forcing his opponents to spend spells on him. And he's absolutely succeeding there. Coming in invis is Amel, and he's got a line to back him up. So which one are they going to go on here? Earth Spirit's nearby, though, and he's got that long range roll to help people out. The arrow going to follow up with a Star Storm. They need to kill Pycat and kill him quickly. Do succeed in doing so. There's a Hex as well, but Lion in all sorts of trouble will end up going down. Wasted Terrorize at least, so small uh, value there for Optic, but losing a carry like that for a support, not a good spot to be in. Um, in the meantime, Raven's still just getting lots of farm on the top lane, queuing up Treads, aiming for a Halberd afterwards, but I, I think Optic has got to be happy with uh, the, the position that the mine. Huskar is in this game. I, I just don't think he's going to be the biggest threat. On the bright side, bounties aplenty for TNC yeah. as they I, uh, glide to a 2k gold advantage. I think the issue becomes it really isn't just about Huska though, because both Wraith King and Mirana are farming very well and both will scale well. Wraith King going for the same build we saw last game, at least queued up. Blink, Blade Melt, Radiance. And this is, I feel like this this is probably the most standard common Wraith King build I, I see, at least in, in pro games, uh, as well as some pub games, is that you just get the Blade Mail and then you farm up this big Radiance time, and you can still fight while you're farming for the Radiance. Like, even when you have three 4k gold stocked up, you're still very useful, assuming you have Reincarnation. Yeah, that's a good point. Peter Van Dam getting caught here by the, the gank here. Tim's actually misclicking with his shadow thing, but uh, Venge okay, might stay alive, master, yeah. actually. The raindrops helping save his life there, it looks like. I mean, if he didn't misclick, that was a kill. Yep. Probably. I guess it would have raindrop blocked all the damage, but perhaps. Not bad uh, for TNC, who may be eyeing off Roshan fairly soon. Husker, of course, a hero that always wants to grab that early Aegis as much as possible. And Optic actually just kind of playing passive for the last five or so minutes. TNC's yeah. doing a great job, like, grouping up and smoking at the right times, but 
um, on, on Optic's side. Looks like they want a little time. Um, still a thousand gold till BKB and Bloodseeker, so that the fights will go better there. And again, what's another smoke? Radiance Middle Tower oh. is under attack. CC is definitely who they one. want. Yeah, they would love to find the Invoker. They think he's farming very safely out here up in the top lane, but it's not the case. He'll probably just stick around. I mean, it's a long ways to like Forge Spirits to push lanes out. But he could actually kill this in this Huskar, though, with like a Cold Snap and a Meteor. I guess he would still ulti Life Break, remove the Cold Snap, and be fine. So maybe this is a really hard kill. It's not, I guess, not a guarantee enough. We'll see if he pokes his head out or not. There's been, these TNC heroes have been missing for so long now that, yeah, they're going to reveal themselves. At this point, you're just assuming, like, if someone's up here, they realize we've been missing for a good 45 seconds. Mid lane CCC terrorized, pushed back into a Bramble Maze. Armel going to line up an arrow with a leap. Doesn't get the Star Storm out, though. I don't think there was going to be quite enough damage regardless. And the arrow duration was just... To hit the arrow, he had to leap forward. So that was a very short arrow stun. And they won't get the kill, but they are pushing top, so not the end of the world. Tim's putting a big show of force in here, even though he's the, literally the only person yeah. here. No cooldowns, no mana pool. Zai might spot him, but that was a that was a nice little move by him. Like, no other way can you convince, like, please slow down this push than teeping in that aggressively with that little spells and casting something. And here they come this time, though. Right, keeping, keeping 33, just holding his ground to try and secure the tower. Perhaps just willing to throw away his life for the cause, but Optic maybe have other ideas. They've got a lot of people up here. They're going to see Lion finger the Earth Spirit. They want to bring him down before he uses any spells. The Magnetize does not come out, and Wraith King wants to chase. He's got Blink soon. Can he get it off? He blinks forward, finds, uh, well, a couple of stuns, but he tanks those with a reincarnation. I don't think he cares if he dies here. He slowed two heroes, killing him. Maybe the death of Optic, and that's why you just want to leave Wraith King alive half the time. They lose two heroes just for a reincarnation cooldown. That is not worth it for them. Yeah, as soon as they lost the Earth Spirit, they needed to get out. And I, I don't blame 3-3 three, three for sticking around. He was trying to interrupt the Blink Dagger yeah. for Sam Mage to cover his allies or land a stun, but the Blink came off cooldown too early. And at that point, it was kind of a hard committal that they'd stuck around a little bit too late. It, it's one of those counterintuitive moments where you should have stunned the Wraith King and ran away, even though he's got 100 health. Just yeah. let him live. It was a level one ulti. Um, he levels it up now, so it's still a, that long 200 second cooldown. So he's got to wait for quite some time to make another maybe team fight impact. But he's you know he's got blink blade now. It's gonna be a while till he gets to level 20 though. And, and CCNC does have level 12 with an axe, three huh. points in wex. So yep. we could start seeing some EMP as matter perhaps. Unlike though some of the other mana burn heroes, it's like the nature of Tornado MP is like you can almost always get your wand off afterwards Seven to give you enough tenets. mana it's true. to reincarnate. Whereas if you get stunned and you're hit by like a PL or a Weaver, you're just you don't get a chance to pop your wand half yeah, the time. That's true. And with the blade mill, he's got more mana than normal. They did notice the bottom ulti come through those. I was scouting Radiant things out with an invis rune. Uh, they just need to stand on the high ground. Uh, Peter's gonna be the one possibly tanking the gank, scan in the mid in the Roche pit as well, but now Zai is gonna spot Tim's. He could solo kill him perhaps. He's, He's gonna, gonna, go, gonna for go for it. it. Stun silence with the sun strike. Nicely played. CCNC gets the last hit even. Yep. No hesitation at all from Zai there. Optic Braver Roshan here. It doesn't look like they have that in mind. They do have the wave of Terra. For some damage amp, but that's not even that that great, Radiant I don't think. We've seen other Avenge lineups try the same thing. They do not kill Roche that rapidly. Um, yeah. Maybe something that's not as important these days. Optic showing CCNC top, but they're actually coming bottom to defend. They know Sam H doesn't have ultimate, I believe. They're going to initiate on him. The immediate TP out gets cancelled. Raven also needs to find a way out here. He's got a TP. Can he find a way to use it in the trees? They bring down the Wraith King eventually as the chase is on, and Raven actually does not get caught up to. 33 doesn't have a blink dagger, any kind of gap close. He's got one queued up, but because of how bad of a game he's got, it's hard to get those extra kills. Either way, some great grabs, though. Uh, it's definitely one thing that Earth Spirit helps out as a four. Like, uh, compared to a lot of other ganking or team fighters, a lot of times heroes like Earth Spirit that, that can affect and, and interrupt TPs, they need Blink Dagger first, but he's got it built in with his rolling boulder. And it's actually been impactful in a couple of these engagements already. Someone calling? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's only TI, right? Uh, what if it's, uh, if I, you know, what I don't if it's think... a really good offer or something? <laughs> I'm not sure what someone calling means. Maybe yelling. Because you, you, your, your phones only get taken away. So That's a good point, actually. I don't think he actually means phones. But uh, Bounty Runes come out again. TNC grab the initial two. There's two more which are untaken, which they can also grab. So you could see another four TNC Bounty Room, which has been a big chunk of gold. I feel like that's close to like three or 4,000 gold just from Bounty Runes that TNC have over Optic. And it feels like a staple for both games, that Optic is maybe not always on top of snagging bounties. I don't know if that's just a... 
I'm not, I'm not really necessarily sure why. Maybe they play a little slower. Maybe they're more defensive. Cuckoo looking dead in the mid lane at least. Yeah. Swap. Cold snap. Easy pickings. Not the biggest deal for him. Pretty small kill to be giving away. Deep aggressive wards do get planted. He got the tower tonight, so it's actually totally worth it, by the way. Oh, I didn't notice that. That's really good. Denies more gold than he gives. Some experience, maybe, uh, but not not a big loss there. And, hey, Raven's like, wait, there's a bounty rune here? 2130? Okay. <laughs> I'll take that one. Yeah. Halberd's finish on Huskar can be really useful against heroes like Bloodseeker. Um, and even Invoker sometimes can be really helpful. Yeah. 3-3. Three, three. Ooh, very close. Almost Hope nailed by that arrow. Yeah. Uh, almost a rare mistake. Interesting skill build, too. The, the old 3-3-3 three, three, three Dragonite. Yep. Not common, but uh, <laughs> 0.4, 0.75 seconds yeah, you know, is done. Sticking true to his name. That's that's a really good point, attack. actually. Yes. It's gonna go full immersion. Uh, the really crippling thing about these bounty runes isn't so much the cores, it's because that's team gold. That's where the supports take the biggest hit in terms of the yeah. percent of their net worth. And that's where, you know, last game, PPD couldn't finish an earn. This game, DK struggling to finish a blink dagger. Her Calling spirit support. just has an earn. Like, these supports wish they were getting these bounty runes. Does put a sentry down, though. Um, TNC yeah. does spot this out, but they have better control in this area of the map. They're doing a good job hiding. I like how they're deep in the trees. Don't even give them an opportunity to initiate. Yep. They're going to fall back and probably try and take Roche themselves now, feeling like it's pretty safe to do so. Earth Spirit, though, in the neighborhood in a pretty cheeky little spot here where he could go for a Roche steal. Yeah, get your Twitch clips ready, guys. Whoa. This could be it. Armel misses the arrow of the sun. So going to give some vision. So now we can time it. He has a very good idea of when Roche is going to go down. Zai. Poised to strike. Here comes the roll with a stun to follow up. He gets times it. it perfectly. Gets the last hit as well. Zai Dota dies immediately. Wraith King, though, the one who dies on the TNC side, side does have reincarnation immediately. Arrow hits the DK as he goes blinking, and they kill the Husker. Wraith King's got no way to survive his second life. He's going to go down as well. And 33 somehow doesn't die. Zai with a magical little play to get Optic Gaming back in game number two. They're not done yet. They're going to get our mail. The Sunstrike, not enough to kill him off, but Zai is there to finish it. Well-deserved kill going his way. And there's the tip. Zai, the man of the moment. That was fantastic what a, what a play. play. Uh, Sunstrike obviously helping in a big way, but they were not ready for an, for an Earth Spirit from the right side. And he's just he, had, he's lived in their jungle the last yes. like three minutes, waiting for this moment, putting wards down. And with this information, I feel like Optic has used this to not get killed on the map. They just felt so much more confident the last five minutes. It's like they, they were just waiting for the Roche fight to happen because yep. of Earth Spirit. Like, yeah, he was living in the enemy jungle, getting down wards. But even after getting the wards on, he just stayed in that exact like cliff spot for the longest time. Oh, CCNC, you do not have the ages. Your team may have just secured a Roche, but you need to be careful. Swapped away to safety. They're going to come in with the Wraith King here. The Finger of Death will help finish him off. Now he doesn't have reincarnation, but it doesn't matter. They've got a showing of force here. They've got numbers. As Raven pops up, will bring down PPD. Full on retreat now for the rest of Optic. And that's Zai's Earth Spirit rolling and teeping away. Nicely done. Will Zai escape. Needs a, he needs a VK, man. He's out of Stone Remnants. He's got one left here. Uh, definitely yeah. a big loss there. CC trying to push that um, those cooldowns a little bit too far. And, and once again, it's always like a single Bramble Maze catches a hero. And it doesn't feel like, it's, it's if you're playing this hero, it it's just feels so rough to land those Bramble Maze. But Tim's always gets the edge on one important hero that leads into the catch, that gets another stun, and just constantly is getting kills for his team. One, two, and nine. Doesn't look impressive on the scoreboard, but he's making really good plays yeah. this game. He's, often, he's been definitely one of the big playmakers for them. As things will still look overall pretty good for TNC. They're going to Moonlight Shadow up and Take a deep venture onto the optic side of the map. They've lost majority of their vision here, which is perhaps partly the reason for this, so they can try and sneak out some bounty runes and also a kill if possible, but no, none present themselves. They'll feel good about this fight, though. They do see Raven juggling over here, so if they can force a team yep. fight, they'll definitely... And what do you know? You know, TNC getting four bounty runes. We've seen this before. We've seen Jeez. this again. This gold difference, I want to say, is almost entirely bounty runes right now. Yeah, it's got to be. I was a, if I was an optic coach, I would certainly bring it up once in a while. Yep. But, um, uh, I mean, we're seeing it not just like from TNC and like optic not doing it. It's like every team will smoke and make plays around bounty runes. Yes. It's like, oh, bounty runes coming up. Let's grab three heroes, smoke, and go and find a kill. Even if you don't find a team fight, you find a single pickoff and you secure bounty runes. It's basically like killing multiple Radiant's heroes. It definitely comes down to what kind of heroes you have, though. I mean, I mean, not that optic gaming's uh, lineup looks Radiant's that abnormal or anything, but. 
if you have lots of low cooldown ultimates, that kind of a thing, then it's fine to do these fights. Like Dragonite, not great at these little bounty run fights because you don't necessarily want to commit to something that might be a half-hearted fight. So another great tower deny. Uh, Tim's being the one for this one. So two towers denied now against Optic. But so great map control around the enemy jungle. This is normally where they want to play, but it's also where heroes like Huskar have to live because um, he can't push lanes very fast and he is a bit vulnerable uh, to a lot of oh, yeah. focus pressure from like three heroes. Mm -hmm. Little three man smoke down bottom. Pycat could be on the receiving end. He does have a BKB, but Lion has a blink. And that's one of the best ways to counter a BKB. A blink hex, a blink impale. This could be the death of Pycat if he's not careful. He's close to his tower, but not close enough. Blink impale is there. Pycat, no wins to BKB. He should be going down here. The boldest smash. Almost there in time to save him, but it's not going to be enough. Zai wants to turn this one around, though he's going to buy back as well. They should be able to get some kills off of this Optic. We'll get the Husker initially. Can they find more? Cuckoo going for the TP out. It's a longish TP. He barely makes it up. PPD trying to get the swap, but it was too late, and he just swaps his teammate. And I think TNC are going to feel great about that. Bloodseeker yeah. bought back. Yeah, the buyback was, was really costly there. About a thousand gold loss for Bloodseeker. Yeah. I think uh, they misread it. They must have assumed... I, they, it felt like they looked like... It was going to be a big team fight, and we're like, oh, they're all here. They just ganked me by a tower. Let's take them in a like 5v5 situation. But yeah. it was just a little gank squad. It was like, let's gank, let's get out. I mean, it could have been really scary, right? If the whole team is there, and they kill PyCat like that and win a team fight. The creep wave is there as well. That could have just been a Rax that happens all of a sudden at a 27 minute window. So, yeah, very um, true. This is one of those things that uh, you have to buy back really fast in a lot of cases to, to make the window of making the team fights better. So, if you hesitate, Bad stuff like that happens. So when you play unpredictable, like TNC has been with some of these movements, that's when you start getting these little edges over your opponent. In this case, a big edge. Yep. That's one of those smoke kinks I feel like is very random. Like, maybe not random. It was obviously very, there was a clear purpose to it, but very few teams would make a play like that. Yep. Like, oh, let's just, you know, we're showing two heroes. There's a Wraith King pushing top. This dire side going all the way down to this, this bottom lane to find a kill right by the enemy tier three is definitely an unexpected play. And Sam H prepping for the Radiance now. Yep. He's playing the somewhat pseudo carry role this game. He's on similar farm to the Husker, but he's going to be much more the front liner than the oh, Husker. Yeah. I mean, especially because Zai is doing so well. 5, 2, and 6. He's picked up Spirit Vessel. You could really see it against a Huskar. Like, once he initiated and he dropped the ultimate and put the Spirit Vessel on Huskar, Huskar was wrecked. There was not yep. much he could do. He's not going to get as much healing. He can't armlet toggle very safely, so. Uh, really straightforward for Zai, at least until he gets a BKB on Huskar. So I, for now, it seems like Ganks is kind of the way that TNC has to play. Um, Lincoln's was the, the armor pickup as well, which protects him against Rupture, but he hasn't really felt like somebody that can also jump into a fight and just be really happy with how things are going. So maybe TNC just does these poking things and gets these ganks off to try to delay things until they have the big items on their heroes. Yep. I definitely can work. For Optic side, it just kind of feels like, you know, they're playing this slower game. They're looking towards the late game, and if they're going late game, it really needs to be CC and C who pulls them through, because DK has no farm whatsoever to scale with, and Bloodseeker, you know, BKB, Halper, this is not a scaling build, so it really is all in on this late game invoker. He's going to have to hit some sick combos. But with the with the Dra Dragonite being behind like this, he's not going to collect more farm that rapidly, especially when he maxes out Breathe Fire last. Um, yeah, which is understandable for the way he's trying to play here. He's trying to be the guy that takes the focus and um, uh, takes a lot of damage, takes a lot of spells. But it obviously his farm level is really starting to suffer. 7,500 for him. Uh, but maybe he's just feeling like I can't actually catch up at this point. I'm too far behind for the Dragonite, so I'm just going to focus on stuns, being in the right place at the right time, and pushing towers. And he's done that. Uh, but they need to start winning team fights because things are going to get out of control if they just stay uh, stagnant and get. Little ganks here and there every five minutes. They're just going to get off farm. Bottom lane, there's a big skelly army on a tier three tower. So let's say somebody has to address this. Bounty runes coming up and optic. First, they've got they've got bounty runes. Two whole bounty runes. Incredible. It's Christmas Day. The richest they felt in a while. Forests are happy. Look at that. Immediately items being bought. This halberd it just shows up out of nowhere. Look what a couple bounty runes will do. Changes everything. And uh, three threes. Inching closer towards his blacking bar, about 500 go for that. That way he can super confidently initiate, actually. Yep. Almost a BKB on Marana. They're going to try to catch him. Get the silence off. Good initiation. Now yeah. the stun. Perfectly played there by Zai. That's, that's an item that doesn't help you against Earth Spirit. The Lincolns is pretty much useless. Very nicely played, hitting those rolling stuns and silences. 
Optic is real happy with that one. At yep. minimum, it's going to be a buyback force, but very likely they, they get the tier two here. Um, Roshan is actually up in about 40 seconds, same time that Marana is uh, respawning, but they're just going to go high ground here. Why not keep pushing? Yep. Hey, it looks. Oh, TNT going to have to come back and do something about this. Maybe looking for a swap here. And they've got the double siege creeps, which is a big part of why they probably went for this push. They put Alacrity on one, they're pinging it. Great clip. TNT's like, we're going to do something about this siege creep. We just lost a tier three tower out of nothing. That Alacrity was... Siege is so goddamn good. I, wasn't that a full HP tower before this? It yes. was. The tier two tower just died. And that... That, those two catapults actually killed the tower. It melted. By themselves. With the uh, Venge aura, but mostly 100 damage from Alacrity here. And now the yeah. game just completely changes with that small moment of them getting the Marana kill because they didn't want to buy back. I mean, I don't think they expected the, the catapults to kill the tower that fast, but they get tier two, they get the tier three, they're going to deal with shrines, and now the map control from TNC is just utterly different. It really it really just all comes back to those two bounty routes, Purge, i got to say. It, getting yeah, those. I think you're right. <laughs> that's, that's the difference, mate. The confidence. They hear that gold yes. down, they're like, you know what, guys? It's going to be all right. Well, that puts them in a, in a good place. Next Roche has respawned. TNC have got to be thinking, that was a bit of a mess up here. We lost a tier three tower, we lost trines, we lost a lot of map control. We need to right this ship as they may look to play around Sam H. He got this Radiance and they've yet to kind of fight around him and achieve anything with it. His level three ulti also online, which is a big timing. 40 second cooldown. You really would want to be fighting as often as possible when you have a level three ulti on Wraith. Well, they're going to pop Pottle multi at least. They've got a haste rune on Dark Willow. Nope, never mind. Ready now. CCT needs to be careful here in this mid lane. He's a little bit exposed. Does have a swap to back him up, though. Yes, and lots of BKBs on the course. They're going to go on the Dragonite instantly. He's going to... Oh, great swap. swap. Going to buy time. Root caught him, though. He is going to BKB before Armor Starstorm hits, though. So they take out the bench with these. Can they bring down CCT? He pops his BKB already very low, though. And on the Dire side, they've taken no casualties and did finish off the Dragonite. Rupture Sun used try. to. Oh, they got Kukulo. Yeah. That's uh, very tempting. I'm sure Bloodseeker is salivating right now. Can they take Roshan off of that? It's a dead DK, and I think, just as importantly, BKBs were used, at least on the Invoker. Bloodseeker still has his. Dire side used a BKB on both Mirana and Huska, but I would say somewhat less dependent on these for a fight. And they, they can't even easily yeah. cross here. They're going to pop smoke. Tim's in a great okay. position, though. Very likely that he'll be able to block the CC and see dropping some Forge Grits. They know they're approaching, but Tornado comes through. A little bit too late. Are they going to take this fight? That'd be very brave. They should know where PPD is off that wave of terror. They're going charging forward, but Optic do yeah. avoid getting caught. I think he's maybe trying to just vision, break blink daggers, that kind of a thing, prevent chase. So yep. they don't get the defend. Definitely a little tough for them, but it was it was actually amazing how effective it was to jump in like that and just burst down 33. They threw all the nukes on him. The, he would have died instantly without swap. No BKB out of him. And it, it really needed to go the opposite way. Dragon Knight's basically playing the same kind of role as what um, the Wraith King normally does. Jump in tanky, disable a guy, and let your allies follow up. But they, they weren't the initiators themselves. And even though... Ooh, bottom lane, TP in. That's going to be... He's got a cheese. One life. Oh, uses the cheese. That's not what you expect when he has reincarnation, but... Should be able to find PPD. Hex Impale, nothing. Cuckoo couldn't find him. He used the Impale already. Guessed, I guess, wrong with where yeah. he was. Yeah, guessed on this line here. And couldn't get vision for a Hex. So nicely done to get out of there. And the cheese was used, which was... Not bad. Perhaps win for Optic, even if just a small one. It, it's weird because the, the swap is a save, but it still feels like the best way for TNC to fight is just to blink stun a hero, even if it, even if they know that hero is getting saved. Because if they get into half health, they're less likely to be able to team fight. Raven mid. He's not going to BKB. Okay. He's got the Aegis. He is going to go for the BKB. Is he going to turn and fight? You betcha. There's a hero in rage. He has been rupt. He's kind of stuck in place here. Doesn't want to go for a life break just yet. He's got Pycat BKB'd up in front of him. Now he goes for the life break with the the uh, the rupture wearing off. He's going to go chasing after him. Gets caught by the Halberd, unfortunately, so he can't do too much damage. But Pycat's lost all his teammates. No Invoker, no Venge, and no life left for him. At least not for another 75 seconds as the push goes down mid. TNC taking game one and now in a fantastic spot for game number two. A 2-0 two in this very contentious group B would be absolutely massive. They did get two bounty runes though, at least. But ultimately it comes down to the same thing that's happened every single other team fight. TNC jumps in, puts a stunner on Born Tiro, they drop Finger of Death, every nuke that they can, yep. and they get a kill. Uh, and this time it was on Invoker. You just, yeah, you burst down that first target. 
or you get them very low and they get swapped out, but either way, they're removed from the fight. So you know you have an edge whether you kill them or not. You've got heroes that are just less dependent on some of those spells. It can be a buyback from Bloodseeker. Husker just going to immediately delete Earthspring. He's got no buyback. 33 TP'd in with a BKB, but he just does no damage. What's his BKB for? It's to get a stun out on Raven, but is there a follow-up? There is a rupture. He's got an Aegis. He may just not care. He can stand still. He's going to get tornadoed. Sunstrike follow-up. Can they kill him once? Better question. Perhaps can they kill him twice? They'll kill him once. Bring him down, as does the Wraith King. He pops the Blade Mail on Respawn. If they want to go for Sam H, they sure as hell can. And they're going to kill him a second time, so no Respawn here. Probably wishes he still had that cheese, as they do go looking for Raven's Husker. Melee Rax was claimed. Uh, they're going to go for it. BKB on Raven if he needs it. Doesn't look like he does. And Willow's out of there. All right. Uh, I mean, I thought that was uh, okay. They did get the full set of racks, but it felt a little bit worse. Uh, they they are still very able to kill the Wraith Knight. Lots of magic damage, basically. So until he gets something like a BKB, and he's got the money, six K gold, six K, yeah. He dies real fast. I think that's the uh, the right pick up here, but we'll see if he does end up committing to it or not. Seems like TNC has been just using BKB, but BKB is a little bit better. But I don't really blame CCNC in the mid lane because they had great vision. They had wards up on both sides, but the pod yeah. multi got used. They dust the Huskar, so they know where Huskar is, but they don't want to pop BKBs just on the off chance that it's Huskar alone and um, nobody else shows up. Uh, so it's like one of those hard, hard moments, and instantly you get a blink hex yes. or a blink stun, and if you can't react in time, it's over. Like your hero's going to get bursted down. So. Tough moment there. Maybe they just needed to be a bit quicker killing the Huskar initially or something, but it's kind of almost like the nature of the heroes that it's a lot easier for TNC to BKB because they can usually see the stuns coming. Um, there's no real. It, the blink stun from a DK is kind of instant, but on the dire side, a blink hex or a blink impale from Cuckoo is very hard to dodge. Ray Fire Blast possible, but tricky, so much easier for TNC to use BKB as well. Yeah, this is those are one of those like super high level things where a small reaction time difference can be, be an absolute yep. change. Like if you are fast enough to get a BKB off, they're looking for a swap maybe on the Wraith King, but he's got BKB active and they notice that. They know it's not time to go now. No. Pre BKB, yeah, kill him twice maybe, but definitely not now. Now it's maybe yeah, maybe now. Gonna, they're gonna try maybe get a, a free cheap kill on him. They don't want to commit too much. They're not throwing any BKBs. They will get that first kill. They're not even... Oh, they are going to stay around here. Sam H immediately BKBs. Looks to turn and fight. Urspirit got Hex up when he went in here. He gets taken out without getting too much off. Did get the Magnetize out. Sam H is dying a second time even with the BKB. Not bad for Optic, but they have lost CC and C. Armel found him. And he's going to throw out an arrow. Doesn't hit 33 here, but Raven's there with the Burning Spears. Should be able to do enough damage to 33. He's trying to hide in the trees, but that threat doesn't work. This isn't TI1 anymore. You don't stay in the trees. You're going to get out of them and go and fight. Tim's is going to fight Pycat as well. The Finger of Death getting him nice and low. Perfectly primed for Tim's to finish him off and get a double kill. He even got PPD. They're all dead. They've all got no buyback. It's GG. Optic have been 2 0 here, and TNC are going to be going to sleep with smiles on their faces tonight. I think Optic did a great job with the heroes they had, but the Dragonite always playing from a position of weakness. The the initiation of TNC was just superior, and it just made me feel very confident in, in TNC over Optic as a team. Like they.